Section 4-1, Quadratic Functions and Transformations. So the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. And for us to find out what a parabola looks like, we need to take a look at its parent function. So the parent function is y equals just x squared. That's what a quadratic function is. Anything squared is going to be quadratic. So I am going to make a table of values so we can find out what our parent function looks like. So I want to plug in some negative numbers and some positive numbers, okay? So if I were to plug negative 2 in for x, negative 2 squared is going to give me positive 4. Plug in negative 1 for x, negative 1 squared gives me positive 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, okay? And if we were to draw this on a graph, let's see what it looks like. So here's 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Put a dot at 2, 4, and then negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4. And instead of it looking like a V, it's now curved, and this is now a U. It's a parabola. So... Just like before, in our absolute value functions, there's still a vertex, which is at the bottom of my parabola. There is an axis of symmetry that cuts my line in half, or my parabola in half, I should say. And now your parabolas can have minimums and maximums, okay? So now let's take a look at what vertex form is. Vertex form is y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared, remember it's quadratic, plus k. Okay, the vertex, just like in our absolute value graphs, is h comma k. The axis of symmetry, the exact same thing, x equals h. Your domain, since those parabolas are never going to quit growing, it's negative infinity to positive infinity, just like your absolute value ones. And then the range... If A is positive, so positive A, then my range is going to be from K with a bracket to infinity. If A is negative, then it's going to be negative infinity to K. Again, this should all match the absolute value graph. Also, if A is positive, this is going to make my parabola have a minimum. And if A is negative, it's going to make my parabola have a maximum. Again, talking about our absolute value graph, same thing. If A is greater than 1, it's going to be a vertical stretch. If A is greater than 0 but less than 1, remember that's that fraction, it's going to be a vertical compression. And if there's a negative sign out in front of your A, it's going to reflect it over only the x-axis. Okay? Remember, when you do a vertical stretch or a vertical compression, you multiply the y values of your point by whatever A is. Okay, so now... If it's minus a number on the inside of your parentheses, same thing if, as if it was minus in the absolute value, it is going to move it to the right. Remember, that's always the opposite of what you're used to thinking. If it's plus a number on the inside of your parentheses, it's going to move it to the left. If it's plus a number at the end, it's going to move my graph up. If it's minus a number at the end, it's going to move my graph down. In example one, we are going to do a little bit of everything all at one time, so I don't have to show you lots of individual examples. So I want us to describe what's happening. Is it a vertical stretch, vertical compression, moving to the left, right, up, or down? I want us to graph it, and I want us to state the characteristics. So in example one, we have y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 3 squared plus 1. Okay, so a is 2, h is 3, k is 1. Okay, 
So since 2 is greater than 1, it's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Minus 3 is going to move my graph to the right, 3. And the plus 1 at the end is going to move my graph up, 1. So in all of these problems, we need to start with the five points that I gave us on the very first slide, the parent function. So we're going to start with negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4, okay? So those points need to be memorized. However, if you forget them, if you're taking a quiz or a test, all what you have to do is plug in negative 2 to positive 2 in for x squared, and it should give you um, the other points, the other part of the point. So when it's a vertical stretch, you take the y part of the point, only the y part of the point, and you multiply it by whatever a is. So in this case, a is 2. So it's not going to affect the x part. So 4 times 2 gives me 8. 1 times 2 gives me 2. 0 times 2 gives me 0. 1 times 2 gives me 2. And 4 times 2 gives me 8. Okay, and I am going to now graph those five points. And I'm going to make this parabola a dash parabola because it's not actually here. I still haven't moved it to the right and I haven't moved it up, but I have vertically stretched it, okay? So now I'm going to take those five points and I'm going to go to the right, one, two, three, and up one, so there's my vertex now. Go to the right, one, two, three, and up one. Right, one, two, three, and up one. Right, one, two, three, and up one. Okay, go right, one, three, and then up one. Okay, and now this is your final parabola. Okay, so now let's state our, our characteristics. So the vertex is h comma k. So since I went to the right and I went 1 my and up, my vertex should be 3, 1, and it should match that point right there. That is the point 3, positive 1. Okay, the axis of symmetry is x equals the x part of my vertex, so it's 3. If you notice, the axis of symmetry is this invisible line that goes through your parabola, so it matches, it's at 3. The domain, those arrows are never going to stop growing, so it's negative infinity to positive infinity. Since A is positive 2, that means my range is going to be from 1 to infinity, which I hope makes sense to you. This is the lowest part of my graph right here, and that's a y value of positive 1. So it's why it's from 1 to infinity, because it's never going to stop growing. Also, since A is positive, this is a minimum. In the book, it might ask you for the minimum value, and that's just going to be what the, um, the k value is, so what's the lowest y value um, on this graph, and that lowest y value is positive 1. Our second example is a U-try problem, so I want you to press pause. I want you to describe what's happening, graph it, and state your characteristics. Okay, so let's describe what's happening. So that negative sign is going to reflect it over the x-axis. And then since a is 1 half, it's going to be a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half. Since it's plus 4, it's moving my graph to the left 4. Since it's minus 2, it's moving my graph down 2. Okay, remember, start with your five parent points, so negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 
4. Okay? Again, you take the y values and you multiply it by what a is. And since a is negative 1 half, go ahead and multiply all your y values by negative 1 half. This is going to reflect it and compress it all at the same time. So that gives me 4 times negative 1 half gives me negative 2. 1 times negative 1 half gives me negative 1 half. 0 times negative 1 half gives me 0. 1 times a half still gives me negative 1 half. And 4 times 1 half gives me negative 2. And I'm now going to plot those new 5 points. Okay, so negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, 1, negative a half, 0, 0, 1, a half, negative a half, and then 2, negative 2. Okay, and if my scale was better, this is what I have so far. Okay, now I need to move those five points to the left four and down two. So left one, two, three, four, down two. When you're a half, remember it's going to be halfway in between. So here's the left-hand side of my parabola. Left one, two, three, four. And here's the right-hand side of my parabola. Make sure these points line up and those points line up. I have my axis of symmetry right here cutting my parabola in half. So let's state our vertex. So it's h comma k. So since I went to the left, it's negative 4, negative 2. Axis of symmetry is the x part of your vertex. So it's x equals negative 4. The domain is always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Even though it's flipped over, it's never going to quit growing. Now my range, since a is negative, it's pointing down, so my graph starts at negative infinity. And the highest y value is the y part of your vertex, so it's negative 2. Since a is negative, this is a maximum.